Let's clear up a misconception right at the beginning of this lecture. Calcification and ossification are not the same things. Calcification is just the deposition of calcium, and the, this isn't restricted to bone. Calcium can be deposited on your squishy organs like your aorta, the large blood vessel that carries blood from the heart to all your systemic or body tissues. Calcium deposits or calcification of squishy organs can come from the overconsumption of calcium or a malfunction of the kidney. Um, either way, the kidney is able to only clear a certain amount of calcium from the blood per day. In contrast, ossification is the process of replacing existing tissue with bone tissue. Ossification is a condition in which squishy organs of the body are, or squishy tissues of the body are converted into bone. And this is different than calcification, which is just hardened calcium deposits. Calcification is the official word, or I'm sorry, ossification is the official word referring to bone formation. Although a majority of bones are formed around the 12 week mark of fetus development, ossification continues through the first 20 years of life as bones grow. I guess that technically means that you are a child until you're 20. <laughs> Beyond this breaking a bone or gaining weight or um, starting a new exercise program, underlying bone will induce ossification so that bone is appropriately formed. There are two types of ossification, and these two types relate to the types of bones that are formed from them. Intramembranous ossification is the formation of flat bones, whereas endochondral ossification is the formation of long bones. For example, to help you keep this separate, endochondral dwarfism is an inherited disease in which long bones fail to elongate after formation. The name of this disease indicates that the condition is a direct result of the lack of endochondral ossification. And this is why people with endochondral dwarfism have limbs and fingers that are not elongated but their pelvis, scapula, and cranial bones are all capable of attaining the average sizes of growth. But their long bones remain compromised in their ability to elongate. I feel as though people with endochondral dwarfism basically have two sets of bones, a set of bones that results from the depression of growth with their disease and a set of bones that is just like everybody else's. Before we get started, it's important to define what mesenchymal cells are. It's one of those terms that your book starts using before it really explains it. Mesenchymal cells, it's, it's a big term. It could be also referred to as a stem cell. Uh, these are cells that don't yet have a specific identity. They're not an osteoblast or an osteoclast, and they could develop into a variety of different cells. For example, chondrocytes, osteoblasts, or other types of skeletal associated cells. Intramembranous ossification. It begins when a bunch of osteoblasts basically get together and have a party within some dense connective tissue. Here is one of my osteoblasts, and you can see that it is starting a party. And all of this stuff around it is a connective tissue model, most likely dense irregular. The osteoblast party is called an ossification center. And the osteoblasts begin by secreting osteoid, which was the organic component of bone, like the collagen and the elastic fibers. Osteoid can be referred to as unmineralized bone. Osteoid can also be referred to as uncalcified bone. 
but it's basically bone that does not have the deposition of calcium salts just yet. The osteoblasts, they lay down this osteoid in sheets that are called lamella. We will see this word a few times, not only here. And the word lamella means sheet, like sheet of paper or covering. As osteoblasts secrete the osteoid, they push themselves away from the ossification center. And you can see what results here in the picture on the right, that the osteoblasts are putting, pushing themselves away. As the osteoblasts secrete osteoid and push themselves away, this is what is called appositional growth. This is a word that means growth along the edge. So appositional growth is a word that refers to the edge and therefore growth that is made from the edges or from the outside. Notice how the picture on the right has a bunch of osteoblasts surrounding the newly formed bone. These osteoblasts will continue to secrete osteoid and allow it to be calcified, pushing themselves outward as this process happens. But what happens is that some of these osteoblasts, they end up getting trapped inside the bone that is being calcified and ossified. And so when they get trapped, some of them turn into osteocytes. And that's what this cell is right here. Notice how the ossification is the secretion of the osteoid or collagen fibers of the bone tissue. And recall how these fibers, collagen and elastin, were only one of two parts of the matrix. Calcification is the deposition of the ground substance of bone. And the ground substance of bone is the calcium salts. So remember, and therefore, ossification and calcification are both needed to complete the formation of bone. The intramembranous ossification continues around the blood vessels that vascularize the area. And this, in part, forms the trabeculae that will support the spongy bone. The last steps in intramembranous ossification form the bone collar and the red marrow. Notice how the picture on the top right still has, or I'm sorry, the picture on the bottom left, still has the osteoblasts on the superficial side of the bone, which is this line right here, because this is bone, and this is a tissue that's called not bone. <laughs> Sorry. These osteoblasts, what they do is they continue to secrete osteoid, which is calcified into compact bone to form the bone collar. These two layers of compact bone, they complete the formation of a flat bone or diploe. Recall, diploe, is the orientation of a spongy bone sandwiched between two layers of compact bone. The compact bone is the bread and the spongy bone is whatever lunch meat or whatever you prefer in your sandwich. The formation of the compact bone, what it does though is that it cuts off the blood vessels that vascularize the forming bone and then the blood vessels, they start to degrade into the red marrow surrounding the area. And that's kind of what's happening right here is that these blood, you can see this one here is really degrading. That one's really breaking down and it's forming into the red marrow. 